The history of the old Zoblop shop dates back to at least 1367 DR. The proprietor initially of the old Zoblop shop was a man named Dandalus Ruel, who was an adventurer and retired. He had defeated a beholder named Zoblop, what a coincidence, and took out its, basically gouged out its eye, and because he was pride of the fact that he defeated this, in single combat, apparently. This is what uh, Volo's Guide to Waterdeep says. He defeated this beholder in single combat, which I find very doubtful, though not inconceivable. Uh, you, yeah, there, there are ways you might be able to do this, uh, if you are clever and lucky. So... Uh, this man, Dandalus Rule, killed a beholder, gouged out its eye, dragged its corpse up to the surface, presumably, because beholders don't really hang around above uh, ground, and uh, put it in front of his shop, and opened up the shop and called it the old Zoblob shop, uh, because he wanted everybody to know how good of an adventurer he had been, because he defeated the stuffed beholder. He used this corpse, essentially, of old Zoblob as a security guard booth. He hired a wizard who had a staff of paralyzation and the wizard just hid in that the, the beholder's um, eye uh, where the eye would be in the beholder's corpse. Um, and if anybody sort of didn't act right, then the wizard would zap them with a wand of paralyzation. And uh, Dandalus Roll himself also had a wand of paralyzation under the counter just to, you know, do the same thing. And it was like with the with what we have in the Dragon Heist story. The old Zoblob shop had just had random like knickknacks. It was basically a, a pawn shop or like a second-hand shop for all kinds of little trinkets and things like that. Although, at the time, it was not yet purple. But it was next to the Purple Palace Fest Hall on the northwest corner of the meeting of uh, Fillet Lane and Slut Street, which is the same location from, uh, from the new Waterdeep map that we have. Two doors down from uh, the Dockward outlet of Aurora's Realms shop catalog counter. And it was a tall, ugly, old stone building. So even old at the time. Windows were few and dust was plentiful. The street level floor of the interior of the shop uh, was just one huge room with exposed ceiling beams supported by an irregular forest of pillars. One of the pillars was hollow in which Dandalus would hide uh, adventurers or anybody trying to run from anybody else. There's a stair hidden behind the serving counter which leads to a high ceilinged basement which contains a bucket flush jakes. I don't know what that is. And it's connected to the sewers via a foot treadle trap door. It's got a lot of barrels. Uh, for wine, and one of the barrels is hollow, which leads into an even more secreter basement room where adventurers or anybody else, once again, could hide for a fee. So he sold wine, which uh, was apparently underpriced. Volo says he enjoyed that much, that much, very much. Yes, uh, indeed, that is the exact sentence I intended to say. And Upstairs from the ground level is where Dandelus Rule and his wife, who has a name, Arathka Rule, whom, whom he lovingly calls Rella, uh, live and sleep and so on. Dandelus was nicknamed Fire Eye. He was a big, balding, bearded, big-bellied fellow who's always cheerful and sees life for the running joke that it so often is. He doesn't make enemies, and even if you try to steal from him, he'll just basically jack up your prices later on, but he's not going to, you know, uh, be your enemy. So the new proprietor of the shop named himself Zoblob after the shop, which was named after the stuffed beholder in the window slash above the counter. 
And he was a deep gnome, or a Svirth Neblin, which is a thing I like to say because it sounds like a record that's running backwards. Now, the timeline isn't given here, but it's conceivable that this was just a he was the, the actual successor to Dandalus rule because uh, the time period uh, from the initial time that we know Dandalus rule was definitely the proprietor of the shop, 1367, until uh, 1492 is more than enough time for um, a, a deep gnome to have survived. They, they live on average of about uh, 250 years. So... We don't know much about him, except that he survived the detonation of a gas spore in the Underdark, which caused him to inherit a few beholder mannerisms and memories. And driven by a compulsion for power, the Deep Gnome settled in Waterdeep and bought the old Zoblob shop. First, he tried to rename the shop after himself, but everyone kept calling it the old Zoblob shop, so instead he renamed himself after the shop. It's not known where the purple stuff comes in. I mean, it's, it's obviously after the gas board detonation. And why would the gnome buy that shop in particular? Well, one, there's the Beholder connection. And two, the old Zoblob shop is right next to the Purple Palace. And the Purple Palace is something that I don't know anything about. And we'll say it's outside the scope of this video. If you want to hear more about that, do the... YouTube stuff. And that'll be it for this video. In the next one, we'll discuss the long and complicated and self-contradictory history of the Xanathars. And that will have spoilers. So if you're a player, and if your name is or resembles in any way Dragonfly, Breglin, Nikwa, Mwanawa, Icarus, or Kloopy, get out. The rest of you people can stay. All right, cool. Till next time.